In my last video, I detailed how to overclock non-K Intel Skylake CPUs using the base clock method. And yes, that's still possible. If you're interested in how to do that, go ahead and click the card above me and check out that corresponding video. But I started thinking about the viability of overclocking, particularly from a gamer standpoint. So if all you do is play video games on your PC, should you consider overclocking? I know that question sounds a little crazy, but I want you to think about it like this. When you increase the voltage of your CPU during an overclock, you're going to be decreasing its lifespan. On top of that, your CPU is just going to run hotter, which is how it works. And because of that, you're going to need some form of custom cooling. So there's money involved, there's a lot of risk involved. Overclocking is a serious thing, and you should know what you're doing before you decide to pursue overclocking in general. So that's what I want to answer in this video. Does overclocking a CPU actually yield higher frame rates in video games? So I ran through all of my tests using the best i5 money can currently buy, the i5-6600K. I paired it with a GTX 970GB WinForce Edition graphics card running at stock, and the CPU was running at 4.6GHz when I first ran my tests. I downclocked the CPU afterwards to 3.6GHz and ran through the exact same test once again, so the frequency of the CPU is the only variable in this scenario. I want to see if that 1GHz frequency difference will yield any substantial change in the frame rates I receive in all of my games that I've tested. So you should expect an increase in FPS, right, as you overclock your CPU, but I want to see if that increase, if any increase exists at all, is, is substantial enough to justify overclocking a CPU. It's essentially what this video is about. So let's go ahead and see what the results were. So that's that. Uh, honestly, a bit disappointing. I expected a much larger difference between our 4.6 and 3.6 gigahertz runs of all of these benchmarks. Even in games like City Skylines and Grand Theft Auto V, which are regarded as much more CPU intensive, those games still really didn't yield any substantial FPS increase with our 4.6 run versus our 3.6. And I think that that has a lot to do with the fact that we didn't overclock our GPU. So even though some of these games are CPU intensive, they're still gonna mostly rely on the graphics card. And because we didn't change that variable at all, and it's just relying on a CPU frequency overclock, it's a bit like a RAM frequency overclock. So your graphics card has its own processor and its own set of RAM, which this, the video games are gonna use primarily anyway. So changing these other variables, changing your CPU or RAM frequency, all of that really isn't going 
going to have as much of an impact on video game performance as changing your GPU or your VRAM frequency would, your memory frequency there, which you can change all that in MSI Afterburner, by the way. Very simple to do, just, just make sure that you actually know what you're doing when you slide those parts left and right. I think an important exception to this rule would be in the case of the G3258 and G4400. CPUs that have lower core counts and lower thread counts will benefit greatly from being overclocked. So if you're looking at buying a CPU from the Skylake lineup that's not very expensive at all, maybe a G4400 or an i3-6100, those CPUs would benefit greatly from being overclocked. But if we're talking about i5s and i7s, I really I don't see the benefits of overclocking those for the sake of solely gaming. Just because what well, you saw in some of these cases like Black Ops 3, uh, our underclocked CPU actually did higher frame rates than our overclocked CPU. So these, you know, these results aren't set in stone, but I want you to take these at face value. Uh, it's, it's, it's really not going to give you that much of an added benefit in gaming uh, if you're deciding to, to purchase an i5-6600K over just a 6600. So consider that. I would save that money if I was you and reinvest that into a more expensive graphics card where you will definitely see some big changes in the frame rates. I want to hear from you, so let me know in the comment sections below if you agree or disagree with my conclusion based on these results right here. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you think it deserves one, give it a thumbs down if you think it doesn't, and subscribe for more videos like this. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.